We're going to intro this one more time. Welcome to the makings of a mega seller workshop. This is an impromptu workshop. Instagram had the glitch of the, the glitches of the century. I've never been on Instagram when it's been so glitchy. So I'm glad everybody could make it into the Zoom room. Um, there will be a replay of this. I will email that out as well. Um, but basically today we're going to talk about exactly what the title says. What makes up a mega seller? I've taught hundreds of mega sellers at this point. I was a mega seller myself. It takes a very particular set of mental skills and the right action in order to add up the equation has to be right in order to add up to becoming an actual mega seller. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Mega sellers are obsessed with what shoppers are shopping for. They are obsessed with knowing what shoppers are currently shopping for, which makes sense, right? It makes total sense. Knowing what shoppers are shopping for allows you to sell what shoppers are shopping for. And if they're actively shopping for it, it means you can sell it. So mega sellers are obsessed with what shoppers are shopping for and how they can get better at giving shoppers those things. So some of you are brand new to me. Some of you are brand new to this in, like environment in general. So I'm just going to let that sink in for a second. Some of you, if you're really new, you might be saying mega sellers are obsessed with strategy. They're obsessed with search engine optimization. They're obsessed with tactics, figuring out how to make more money. No mega seller I've ever met is obsessed with any of those things, period. So the shift that people have to make when they go into selling versus what they actually learn, what it takes over time, it blows their mind because it's com a two completely different ends of the spectrum, right? So mega sellers take massive and consistent action. If you guys have not read the 10 X rule by Grant Cardone, it's a great one to put on your list. I do not 110% agree with what's in the book. So he talks about 10 Xing your action in general is going to inevitably get you to wherever you want to go. Right. I don't think necessarily that more action is going to get you to where you want to go, but more action in general is going to help you learn faster. So it's not just that 10 X in your action is going to the 10 X role. It's not going to help you get to where you want to go just because you're doing more. It's going to help you get to where you want to go because you're learning things faster and you're actually experientially learning things on the go. Okay. So we're going to talk about this in a bit as well. It's not that more listings is going to get you more sales necessarily. The two are not directly correlated as many people think they are. It's just that the learning process of doing more is going to help you gather more information about what works and what doesn't. And it's going to help you learn about yourself. It's going to help you learn about your customers. Taking more action is almost always going to be more beneficial. Okay. The 10 X rule by Grant Cardone. Mega sellers. The reason I'm talking about this is because mega sellers are experts at taking massive and consistent action. Now it kind of goes without saying the mega sellers that I work with have gone through top seller secret. They have gone through my master course. They do have my blueprint, right? But the strategy part of it, that's easy. That's the easy part. I've got it. We know that it's proven. We know it's proven and it works period. That is the easiest part of all of this. Getting the strategy to get to six figures is literally the easiest part of all of it. Top seller secret, the blueprint inside of top seller secret has been tested and proven over and over and over and over and over again. So we already know that it works. We already know that what's inside is the map to six figures. If you do the things that it takes to become that mega seller while implementing the strategy simultaneously. And that's what we're talking about here today. Sort of those missing pieces. You, everybody here has access to the strategy inside Top Seller Secret if you want it. But strategy is half the puzzle, okay? The rest is all of this other stuff that makes up what actually takes people across the finish line in terms of becoming a mega seller. Are you guys hearing me? Is, that, is what I'm saying making sense? Let me know in the chat. I want to keep this workshop pretty interactive. I want you guys to be able to ask questions as we go. I'm going to be throwing a lot of information and mindset stuff at you. And I want you to give me your feedback in the chat as we go. And as any questions pop up, feel free to put them in the chat as well. I just want to know that you guys are with me, that you're hearing, that you're hearing me, that you're resonating with it. Okay. Um, 
mega sellers act differently because they think differently. Their focus is correct. The difference between you and a mega seller, the difference between you right now who's struggling in your shop and a mega seller who's making multi six figures, right? The difference is that they're taking actions based on the blueprint they're given and they don't let doubts slow them down. They just go. So many of you, so many of you have exactly what you're supposed to do right in front of your face, but you're not doing it. Okay. And this is going to be a little bit of that tough love that I talked about before I got kicked off of Instagram live. I didn't give that warning in this, in this, uh, zoom room. And I will, for those watching the replay, this is going to be a tough one for a lot of people to swallow. Okay. Because the level at which I need to speak to you guys today in order to get you to evolve and to get you to actually make that mental leap to the next level. A lot of what I say is the truth, but it's going to sting a little bit, <laughs> maybe a lot of it. Right. But I don't have time to sugarcoat this for you. You don't have time to hear it in a sugarcoated way. We got to get you to where you want to go as fast as possible. So we're just going to say things exactly as they are. A lot of people have exactly what they're supposed to do right in front of them, but they have these mental blocks and these limiting beliefs around being able to do it. So they see exactly what they're supposed to do. It's as if you're holding a map in your hands and you know exactly what next step to take, but you, but for some reason you can't take the next step and you don't know why, but the why is what's happening in your head, the way that you're thinking and the way that you're seeing things. That's what I mean when I say that mega sellers think differently, they're holding the map and they're actually taking the steps on the map and they do not let the doubts or the limiting beliefs stop them from taking the next step. A lot of you are messing around. Okay. I'll be very honest. I see a lot of it all the time. A lot of people are like, I need, I need shop critiques. I need one-on-ones with you. I need, I need, I need that direct communication to know what I'm doing wrong. No, you don't. If, especially if you're in top seller secret, you already have the strategy. Your problem is not that you need me to tell you something new. It's just that you need to actually take action on the map. Lauren says, yes, I've learned this recently. Yeah. This is a huge problem. Okay. This is such a huge and honestly, very widespread problem. You have exactly what to do next in front of you, but you're not doing it. And you may not even know that you're not doing it. You may think that you're confused. You, your brain may be convincing you that like, well, I just don't know how to do it. You actually do, but you're not thinking like a mega seller. You're thinking from, I've talked about this before. There's your small self and there's your big self. And when you're not taking the right actions, even though you know what you should be doing, you've got the strategy, you're in top seller secret, you know what you should be doing and you're not doing it. You're in your small self. There's a big self and there's a small self. A lot of us are operating from small self because it's more comfortable and we have not trained our brains to make decisions from big self. Mega sellers make decisions from big self and they do things that most people are, are extremely scared of. And there's a lot of fear involved because there's, there's the failure stuff. There's the what ifs, there's the, you know, people are going to see that I put out this t-shirt listing and it's not going to sell. And then they're going to think I'm stupid. Like that kind of mini stuff, little tiny things. It feels really big in your head. In reality, it's a very small deal. People who are not yet mega sellers allow themselves to make little things, big deals. We're going to get to that later as well. Um, but mega sellers do not let doubt slow them down. They just go, they know what they're supposed to do. They get the right resources in order to take the right actions. And guess what? They actually do it. They actually follow through with it. They actually stick with it. That's the difference. Nicole says, I think it's an anxiety thing and fear of success. Fear of success is a real thing. People get frozen, stay in their heads and don't take action 100, 110%. But you're, you're afraid of success because you don't believe you deserve it. It's a, it's a limiting belief that is not the truth. It's a truth. It's a, it's a thought that you've accepted as truth because it feels true, right? Fear of success is huge. People can want success and fear it and push it away at the exact same time because we're humans and really annoying in that way, right? It's a very annoying thing that our brains allow those two things to happen at the same time. 
but that's when you've got to introduce your small self to your big self and say, you know what, small self, you're no longer serving me. I'm going to start making conscious decisions because most of the times when you have a fear of success, you don't know you have a fear of success. It's an unconscious problem. And that small self is keeping you locked in to that place. So you don't get to the next level because it's scared of it introducing consciousness and saying, no, I'm going to take intentional action. I know I feel this way that I'm scared of success. I'm scared of doing the, the next thing. I'm going to identify that, become aware of it. And I'm going to do the shit anyways that I need to do because I'm going to start making decisions from big self because this is what I want. And this is what I know I deserve. It's very uncomfortable. And that's the thing that's holding a lot of you back. And it's the reason why a lot of people can have all the right strategy and still not make it. Right. You've got the map that takes you from Washington to California, but you keep ending up in Tennessee, but you have the map. Why is that? Right. It's the same reason why a lot of people hold the right map going from zero to six figures and they, they go zero to a hundred bucks in sales. And then it's like, I'm not where I wanted to be. I'm holding the right map, but I can't get there. Obviously there's something else that's going on underneath the surface, right? There's something happening that you are not yet conscious of. And it's your responsibility to intentionally shift from your small self to your big self. I have ADD and find myself always distracted in, in different directions. So that's my issue. Yvette, I don't, I, I myself don't see that as an issue. I understand ADD. I understand that it's a mental thing. I love people that get distracted easily. I really do. It means you're always thinking of new things and your brain's always on. And if you can learn to harness it, it can be your superpower. 110%. And I, I hear people all the time saying like, I research, but I get distracted a lot by this and I'll go down a rabbit hole and start researching this. But then I research this and I feel like I'm always great. Research is supposed to be messy. You're supposed to be distracted by different things. It's not supposed to be perfect. You're not supposed to have spreadsheets. You're supposed to let things flow. You're supposed to be like, Ooh, that sounds interesting. And that sounds interesting. And that sounds interesting. It's just a matter of allowing yourself to explore different areas. You don't have to stay on a single path and do things like, Oh, I got to go from a to Z today. No, go from a to L to Z to B. Like it doesn't matter. You can jump around, give yourself permission to jump around. The distraction thing is only a problem if you yourself tell yourself it's a problem, right? A million different ideas. Best problem to have, a million different ideas, right? But it's your responsibility to hone that in as necessary. It doesn't have to be honed in perfectly by any means. It shouldn't be honed in perfectly because you want to keep that stream of a million different ideas. But what you need to do is learn to implement a little bit of discipline to where you're following through with whatever rises to the top as the best ideas, right? Mega sellers, you guys, they have the same problems you have. They deal with them differently. Mega sellers deal with exactly the same things that you deal with. They go through exactly the same learning curve. They have the same problems. They have the same mental issues, right? Distraction, doubts, all that stuff. They deal with them differently. They make them small. They do not accept these things as like big roadblocks. It's like, yeah, I got distracted, but who cares? I'll use it to my benefit. It's, it's a matter of shifting the way that you're thinking into a completely new realm. Okay. Uh, mega sellers give themselves permission. This is really, really, really important. Mega sellers give themselves permission. And what I'm about to say is going to hurt feelings. Mariana says, but actually the best life advice, hundred percent. Yeah. That this does not just, um, apply to print on demand alone. Here's the thing. This is, this is tough love. Okay. But I'm going to say it exactly as it's written here. <laughs> Mega sellers give themselves permission. They are not waiting for a shop critique from me to tell them to do what I've already told them to do and shown them exactly how to do it in top seller secret. Okay. They are not waiting for me or anyone to retell them what to do when they already have the map. Some of you, maybe you're not in top seller secret yet. You don't have the map. This doesn't necessarily apply to you, but maybe you do know some of the things that you should be doing and you're not doing them anyways. Mega sellers just give themselves permission. They say, no, I have this in my hand. I already know what to do. If I don't know what to do, I get the resources I need in order to tell me what to do. And then I just do it. I don't need to hire Brittany to tell me what to do after she's already outlined it 
in depth in her course, right? I don't need her to tell me again. I'm just going to take action. Does that make sense, guys? You're not waiting for somebody to give you permission to do what you already know you need to do. You're not waiting for me to tell you, you need to research more. You need to spend more time researching. You're not waiting for me to tell you, you made five sales on this t-shirt, build out on it. I cannot tell you how much this happens, you guys. Unfortunately, I experience this all the time. People who have the blueprint, they know exactly what to do next. They, they like wait for me to tell them to do it. And then they're like, oh yeah, mega sellers, they are just out there doing the damn thing. And even if they don't have exactly what their next step is, they're figuring it out by being extremely messy. Okay. What I want to say is to stop fucking around. And I'm going to curse there because it's that important. I, I've been trying to curse less in my lives, but I'm going to curse there because it's that important. A lot of you are messing around. A lot of you are saying you want to be a six figure seller and you're not taking six figure seller level action. You're just not, let's be honest, right? Let's be honest with ourselves right now in this moment. You really, really, really are desperate to be a six figure seller. Are you giving it your all? No. Are you giving yourself permission to just take action and do what needs to be done? Do you have a wolf mentality? Are you operating from your big self intentionally instead of making small self decisions because it's more comfortable? Ouch, right? That stings if you need to hear it. Holly says, need to hear this, y'all. Do the damn thing. Stop messing around. Literally stop messing around. This especially goes out to those of you who are already in Top Seller Secret. If you already have the map, you do not have excuses. Okay? I don't care what's happening in your life. I don't care what you think your roadblocks are. I don't care what you're telling yourself is true. It doesn't matter. I don't care about your small self. Literally, you guys, I, I do not give one single fuck about what your small self is telling you in order to keep you small. I don't care. And you shouldn't care either. I literally do not care. It does not matter because the only thing I'm concerned with is who you become through operating from your big self. So if it comes down to the fact that every single day you ask, okay, here's what I want to do today, but what would my big self actually have me do? Because you already know, none of you give yourself enough credit. You already know so much of what you're supposed to be doing, but you're operating from small self that doesn't let you do it. So stop caring about small self. Stop caring about staying comfortable. Acknowledge where you're at and acknowledge the fact that wherever it is, it's totally fine. And acknowledge the fact that I'm, I'm starting here and that's perfect. Every one of you, there's 76 of you in this Zoom right now. Every single one of you is at the perfect starting point to get to where you want to go. And if you think that my journey was easy, that I didn't deal with the type of stuff you're going through or, or a lot of the mega sellers that come out of Top Seller Secret, they didn't have to deal with some of the stuff you're going through, you're wrong. You're 110% wrong. There are people in more dire circumstances than you with more problems and more limits that are doing double what you're doing right now. That's a fact. And that pisses me off because I think I apply that to myself as well because I have a lot of excuses. I try to operate from my big self as often as possible, but I still have a small self as well. And when I hear that somebody is doing twice as much as me with half of my resources and abilities kills me, but it's true. There are people out there, billions of people in this world. There are people out there in worse circumstances than me doing double what I'm doing triple, quadruple even, because I've let my small self take over a certain level of thinking for me. Hunter says, oof, it, it stings, right? But what could possibly be more motivating? Like, because to ourselves, we convince ourselves like, no, but I'm, I'm 
I haven't been feeling well. I got a divorce. I just moved. I am not where I want to be in my life in general. I'm dealing with depression. I have a chronic illness. I, you know, have family problems. I just lost my house. I just lost my job. Like there's so many things that feel so true for us that because these things are happening, we can't get to the level that we're trying to get to. There are people dealing with triple that, that are doing way better than you right now. It's so true. Okay. Uh, I just tell my small self to shut up. <laughs> Holly, that's one way. Uh, Lauren says that's deep AF. How long on average does it take to become a mega seller? Michaela, there is no average period. The journey is so widely varied and it depends on literally thousands of different variables. Some people, it takes years. Some people, it takes a month. Some people, it takes six months. I did it in a year. There's so many different factors. It's not even worth answering that question with, with like an estimate because that's silly. There is no estimate. There is no average. Everybody operates on a different timeline and that's actually going to benefit you more to think that way. My timeline, it's not going to look like anybody else's. I don't need an estimate of how long it takes to be a mega seller because everybody's individualized and mine may happen really fast. It may happen really slow, but either way I'm doing it. That's what you need to adopt. We need to stop asking the wrong questions. Not saying that's the wrong question, Michaela, but from a perspective of how long is this going to take me? How long does it take most people? How long, like operating on a time spectrum is going to work against you because if it doesn't happen in the timing that you're expecting, it's going to discourage you. And once you hit that, that timeline, once you, if I said, okay, it takes six months, once you hit six months and you're not a mega seller yet, you're going to be like, well, it, it takes the average person six months. I'm not there yet. You start going down the motivation, the inspiration, the drive starts going down, right? So it's, 100% in your favor to not try to put things on a timeline. And lucky for us, there literally is no timeline. Students in my course hit different levels at wildly different times. It's so crazy varied. Um, did you have a shift where you didn't have that mindset and then shifted to it? Lauren asks, um, Lauren, I am an insane person. <laughs> I don't know if you guys notice, I am very, very, very intense. And this is not something that I became. This is who I've literally always been. You can ask my mother. I drove her crazy as a child. I was always creating, like I was 10 doing nails at my grandma's like birthdays and dinners with my family. I was like doing their nails and I had a manicure business, right? They'd pay me $3 to do their nails at 10 years old. And I was, I had a, um, a million different businesses. I could talk about this all day long. I am through and through an entrepreneur. So I'm really, 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 really lucky that I was born into this mental state of like just getting shit done 24 seven. Like I know what I want and I go after it so hard that it's, it's both my, my blessing and my curse. Right. So when I'm teaching other people how to shift into it, um, I may have less empathy. And I acknowledge that I may have less empathy for being in that, staying in that small cell for too long because I've always been so intense and so like a dog with a bone going after what I want. But I acknowledge that everybody's not like that. Right. And I honestly think, like I said, it's a blessing and a curse. I honestly don't know that everybody should be like that. Shifting to that mindset, however, I know is not difficult. It's only difficult if you make it difficult because shifting to that mindset, you get there through having fun. You get through, through following what lights you up. It's not that you have to be like, I just posted something about this on my story the other day. It's not that you have to say, okay, I'm having these small minded thoughts of not being able to do this or not wanting to research today or not doing this. I'm telling myself to stop having those thoughts, right? You're resisting your resistance and making things worse. The way to shift out of your small self is to be expansive. It's to feel good. It's to have fun. It's to follow what lights you up. It's to um, 
find in research what sounds interesting and go after it. It's to follow impulses. It's to clear out all the bullshit that you've been telling yourself is true. So you can actually listen internally. All of us has this inner compass that will tell us what to do next if we're clear enough to receive it. The problem is most of us are not clear enough to receive it, myself included, a lot of the times, right? Your duty is to just clear out all the bullshit, all the stuff that feels bad. Don't resist the resistance. Don't tell yourself, stop thinking those thoughts, right? I got to stop it. I got to stop operating out of small self. I got like that sort of aggression towards yourself does not help you shift. It actually compounds the small self because you're giving it attention and you're feeding it. You're resisting the resistance. So you're building the resistance. Is this making sense guys? So the good news is you just get to have fun. The more fun you're having, the more creative flow you're getting into and the more creative flow you're getting into, the more things feel open and the more possibilities you can see and the more things start unlocking. That's the truth. That's the key. And that's um, the way a lot of mega sellers operate is they keep themselves very clear. They don't allow their small self to have a say in that not that they're shutting it up and being aggressive toward themselves they're just allowing themselves to be more open and have more fun and i talk about fun a lot and i think people think that it's just because i'm just saying like oh have more fun and it'll help you like no fun is the unlock for multiple reasons and and mega sellers understand that i didn't expect this to hit me so hard very true though i needed to hear this that's amazing i'm so glad it's resonating Tuning into divine timing, just wondering about the 3D. Yep. Lauren says that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad that this is resonating with you guys. I know it's it's definitely, like I said, it's going to be a little bit of like the higher level talk, but this is the stuff that I know to be true. It is the stuff that is so, so at the core level of what it takes to make those six and multi six figures. Okay. Cause I, I told you in the beginning, you can get into top seller secret. The strategy is the easiest part. Getting the roadmap. It's the easiest part. Mentally getting yourself to the place where you're actually taking actions based on the blueprint in a consistent enough way to where you start actually seeing results because you've shifted to a non results oriented mindset to where you're just saying, I'm, I'm going to have fun opportunity and possibilities and, and achieving things at the highest levels. Don't, come from force. They come from flow and being able to flow means you're not resisting anything. You're not operating from small self. You've tapped into this new level. And this sounds very mystical and pie in the sky, sort of weird woo woo stuff. It's not I'm telling you this is the missing link for most of you here today. Okay. So, um, the sellers who are failing, are thinking about and focused on themselves. More tough love, guys. I told you it's gonna be thing after thing after thing after thing today, but I think it's what you guys need to hear. Uh, sellers who are failing and struggling, you're thinking about yourself and you're focused on yourself. What can I get? How can I get more sales? How can I make more money? How can I use Etsy to be able to do what I wanna do in life? Which on a service level, it's fine to think that way. It's fine to, um, to want Etsy to be the thing that gets you to where you want to go in life, to, to be able to unlock that level of freedom, especially because we have so much proof of it being possible nowadays. However, when you're building to the levels of, of being a mega seller, you cannot focus on yourself. You cannot focus on how can I make more sales? Natasha says, I love your straightforwardness. It's the only way to get better at this. Natasha, I agree. Sugar coating is not for me. Mega sellers are 110% focused on their customer and learning more plus improving their skills every day. They're not worried about how to make more sales. They're worried about what are my customers looking for? How do I get better at giving it to them? Okay. Putting those puzzle pieces together. That's the fun part. When you're worried about how to make more sales, it feels horrible. It feels awful because you're like, how do I get from here to there without, it's like, how do I put this puzzle piece? How do I put this puzzle together? And you don't have any puzzle pieces versus how do I put this puzzle together? And the puzzle pieces are what you're learning and finding every day through your research and through talking to customers and through just being curious and having fun. This is the part that nobody gets. If you're struggling, you're not getting this because if you got it, you wouldn't be struggling. 
mega sellers have the correct focus. They are so, so driven by what their customers are looking for and how to get better at giving it to them. So that means they're, yes, obsessed with research. They're obsessed with learning what's in demand because they know that's their direct link to more sales. It's not, I'm worried about getting more sales. It's I'm worried about learning what's in demand because there's that indirect connection to sales, not even indirect. It's directly connected to sales, but we're going down a level. Instead of focusing on the sales, we're focusing on the root cause of what gets us sales. Because when we're focused up here, we can't get there because we're missing the root. People want to skip. They don't want to learn what's in demand. They don't want to do the research. They're like, how do I just get to the sales? And it's like, well, you don't have any foundation to get there. There's nothing that's taking you there. You just want to leap there magically. It doesn't work that way. You have to get to the root. You have to solidify the foundation first, which is demand. It's research. It's being obsessed with knowing what your customers want, researching your customer, talking to your customers, getting curious, having fun, designing every single day, researching every single day, doing the actual work that it takes. Mega sellers don't become mega sellers magically. They're no different from you. They may have less experience than you. They may be less creative than you. They may be in more dire life circumstances than you. Let's go back to that, right? Because a lot of times people assume because somebody has done things at a higher level, succeeded faster or better or higher than them. Oh, they've had advantage. They have advantages. Maybe they've sold before online. Maybe they're more creative. Maybe they're a graphic designer. Maybe they had a bunch of money to hire somebody. Maybe they have a bunch of help. More than likely, they don't. More than likely, they were worse off with, than you when they started, right? That's life. Some people figure it out because they're mentally in the right place, thinking in the right ways. Some people don't ever figure it out because they can never get a handle on their thoughts or their focus. Those of you who are obsessed with checking your stats every day, how do I turn favorites into purchases? How many views did I get today? Where are my sales? What am I doing wrong? Small self. Small self doesn't get you to six figures. Catch yourself when you're in that small self. And like I said, don't resist the resistance. Don't shame yourself for thinking small thoughts, but shed light on them so you're aware. Oh, that's a, that's a small self thought. That's not going to help me to get to six figures. How can I shift that thought? So if you're like, where are my sales? What am I doing wrong? Shift into... What can I do right now that's going to help me improve my designing skills? That's going to help build my mental archive. What a simple shift that is, you guys. And how much more power do you feel in that second thought than the first? What am I doing wrong? I've been trying so hard. Nothing's working. Where are my sales? Small self. Making that shift. What can I research right now? Can I hop onto my designated Instagram account and look through the feed and get inspired? Yes. What have the customers been saying in my messages? You don't have any messages. What have, um, what have customers been favoriting in my shop? You don't have favorites. What have I shown the people in my life that I'm doing that they've loved or that they've had a big reaction to? If you're not showing people in your life what you're doing in terms of design, what do I love the most that I can make more of based on my research, right? There's always something easier to think of. There's always thoughts that feel better, but you have to be so intentional about shifting. But the only way you're going to make it to six figures if, if, is if you start thinking from your big self, if you start making that shift intentionally, right? That was so hard at first, designing something different from what I wanted. Focusing on the buyer is hard at first, but making that shift has been instrumental in helping me become a better Etsy seller. Yeah, it's not easy. Nothing that I'm talking about is easy. Being a mega seller, making $200,000 in 30 days on Etsy, if you're expecting that to be easy, you can leave the Zoom right now. None of this is easy, but it can be so fun. Like my entire journey of selling on Etsy it never felt like work because I was having so much fun and I was always so open and I was just letting curiosity lead me and take me to my next step. Most of you are not curious. You're so focused on making sales that there's no room for curiosity or fun. It's just like, well, how do I make more sales? Right? 
Um, so mega sellers are 100%, 110% focused on their customer and learning more and improving their skills every day. As I've already said, lack of strategy, it's not a problem. I have the strategy for you. It's in Top Seller Secret. It's in Wolf School, right? And I actually have, if you are not in Top Seller Secret, let me take a pause really fast and, and announce this. Um, and I'm actually going to put the link in the chat here. If you're not in Top Seller Secret yet, but you've been on the fence and want to join, given this workshop today, I'm doing something crazy and I'm adding in Design Bootcamp, Research Revolution, and Designing for the Holidays. And you can buy it with Afterpay. Okay, so that this is just a side note. If you are not in Top Seller Secret yet and you need that blueprint, you're going to work with the blueprint and work on shifting into your big self simultaneously, then you will become a mega seller, right? 24 hour flash sale only. I'm going to send an email out about it after this workshop, but it's going to be 24 hours only and you're getting like basically everything, all of the, the main core things that I sell in Top Seller Secret um, plus all of these other courses. Uh, and you can use Afterpay. Lack of strategy is not the problem. Stop telling yourself that. You've got access to the blueprints. It's not the problem, okay? Meg mega sellers are not necessarily built differently, okay? Many feel incompetent, but they keep going anyways. So I know a lot of you in here, just in general, most people feel incompetent. Most people feel like whatever the new thing is that they want to do, they're incompetent of doing it. And guess what? When you start, you are incompetent. The first day you open the Etsy shop is not the day you become a mega seller. There's a learning curve. There's a period of time where you must build your competence. So that's also a shift you have to make, right? Instead of thinking I'm incompetent, I can't do it. You start thinking, I can build my competence. I may not be there yet, but there's absolutely nothing keeping me from building that competence to become that mega seller. There's nothing stopping me from learning. You don't hop on a bike as a kid right away and know how to ride it. There's a learning curve of learning how to ride the bikes. You start with training wheels. You start very slowly. You start a couple pedals at a time. You get better as you go. Print on demand is a skill like anything else that you must build competence along the way. You might be at a 10% competence when you start, given where you're at. You might be at a 0% competence. You might be at 90% competence. Everybody starts in a different position. Regardless of where you're at on the spectrum, you have the ability to build your competence by getting the right resources and by taking action. It doesn't make sense to say, I'm no good at this. Yeah, no shit. Nobody is when they start. Attempting anything new, there's going to be a time period of building competence and a time where you just have to accept that you're not competent yet because you need to go through the process. Okay. Mega sellers are not necessarily built different. Many feel incompetent, but keep trying anyways. The difference is their focus. So they're always focused on building competency. They're always focused on improving they're, they're not focused on tactics. They're not worried about hiring someone from Fiverr to get them to the first page of search results, right? They're not worried about that because they know that that's a quick fix that's not actually gonna solve anything for them in the long run. They know that if they can work every single day on their competence, they're getting better at designing, they're getting better at research, they're learning more about what their customers are actually actively looking for, that's what's taking them to six-figure levels. They know that they know that, that that's how it works. And that's the difference, right? A lot of people don't want to go through the process of building competency. They either want to start out feeling totally competent or they don't want to do it at all. I've never said that before. You guys, that's a good one. Most people are not willing to go through the process of building competency. If they do not feel competent to begin with, they don't want to start. They feel locked in. They feel like, oh, I suck. Everybody seems to be doing it faster. They, they have all these small self thoughts, right? Becoming a six-figure seller requires that you step up to the plate. 
of building competency. It requires you to accept you're at a certain level of incompetence and that you have to go through this process of building it up. That's what mega sellers, mega sellers are excited by that. That's really one of the main differences is that they're like, I'm not competent yet. That yet, you guys can see how excited I get when I talk about that. I love the yet. The yet is what makes me crazy in the best way possible. I'm like yet, which means I have all this fun ahead of me to get there. If the yet makes you feel worse, if it like lowers your energy, it's because you're obsessed with that, that level of incompetence. It's, it's reinforcing something that you already believe about yourself, that you're not capable. I know I'm capable of doing literally anything. I was just thinking about this the other day. I was like, I, I literally believed in my bones that I could achieve actually anything. And, and there's everybody always talks about, oh, well, you can achieve whatever you put your mind to. And it just kind of sounds like static to us at this point because everybody always says it. I 110% believe that I can actually do absolutely anything because I believe in my ability to build competence over time. And I don't care about the time part. I'm excited just for the process of building competency. That makes me excited because it's fun because I believe in my ultimate ability. Does that make sense? I actually believe that I can do it. So the process of building competency is just my road to getting there. And that's exciting. The power of yet is like whew, nothing more inspiring, motivating, like lights of fire under my ass than that. Because it's, it's seeing it as a challenge. Like I'm like, yeah, I'm ready to step up to the plate. Yes, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to learn. I'm willing to build my competency just because I'm incompetent right now. That doesn't mean anything about me or who I am or what I'm actually eventually capable of. It just means that's where I am, where I stand. I don't have the experience yet, but anybody can get the experience. Anybody has the ability to build the competency. You just have to believe in the fact that you're able to do that. And you have to let go of the fact that you're not going to get there immediately. Everybody starts out incompetent. If you don't have the experience, you're going to be incompetent doesn't mean anything about you or your potential or what you're eventually going to be able to achieve. And that's huge. The self-sabotage is wild. I know it takes time to build competence and I need to stop beating myself up for not being where I want to be. Just keep pushing through. Yeah. And, and I, I would challenge you to change the verbiage of that a little bit, given what we just talked about. It's not about like pushing through or, or certainly not about beating yourself up, but like, it's not about pushing through and like, Oh, I just got to keep going anyways. Eventually I'll get there. Like that feels heavy. That feels bad. That feels like an obligation. That feels like you're being pulled instead of being pushed. So you're being pulled by what you want. And that feels like you're being pulled. There's a noose around your neck and you're being pulled toward what you want. Right. And you're like, I just got to keep going. I'll get there eventually. How does that feel in your body? Kind of sucks, right? It's being pulled versus being pushed. What I just talked about, my perspective of the power of yet and like getting so excited when I think about I'm not there, but I'm not there yet, that's push, right? That I'm like, it feels effortless to start building my competency because there's nothing that I'd rather do more than get started on building my competency because it sounds like so much fun. It's such a good, juicy, big, open challenge. It's not that I have to push through anything. I'm not pushing at all, right? Are you guys hearing what I'm saying? The difference in those two sentiments, I'm not pushing at all. And, and whoever's on the iPad that said that I'm not coming for you, I'm just loving that you, you said it in that way because the feeling state is so completely different. I get excited by opportunity. And most people, if you're not in that level of competency to where you want to be yet, they don't see it as opportunity. They see it as like, oh, first I got to go through all this to get to that level of competency. Versus how mega sellers think, just like, oh, I get to go through all of that to get to where I want to go. Right? That's how I see it. And that comes naturally to me. Like I said, I was born with this incredibly strong drive toward getting what I want because I believe innately that I'm capable of doing literally anything I want. I'm capable of achieving anything because I've experienced the learning curves 
of competency over my life so many times and I've achieved so much just because I've been willing to stick through that learning curve and I've made it fun and exciting and led by curiosity instead of something that I feel like I need to push through. That distinction is absolutely everything. Kate says, yes, the mental shift is the effing key, especially saying it out loud to yourself. Yeah, it, it's like, instead of the people that come to me every day and being like, it's not working, what am I doing wrong? I'm not there yet, blah, blah, blah. It's like, you're not there yet. You've got this incredible journey ahead of you. You get to learn. We live in 2023, you guys, there's so many resources. There's no excuses to not be able to do something. But it starts with your level of self-belief first and foremost, right? Um, And this, I'm going to skip ahead to a point that I have because it, it ties in directly to this. Mega sellers don't get caught up in overthinking silly things that don't matter in the long run. They're not overthinking anything. They're just doing and acting and adjusting and shifting as they go. So a lot of people overthink things because they don't want to make the wrong move. But mega sellers want to make all the moves, including the wrong ones, because they know they can gather information from that wrong move and then shift to a better move. They know that making the wrong move is sometimes as valuable as making the right move because all of it at the end of the day is just data collection. They don't make wrong moves mean anything about their identity or who they are or what they're capable of. And a lot of people do that. They see micro failures, things that they try that don't work. They let it reflect on them. Mega sellers don't do that. Okay. Overthinking is really your lack. It, it's a compensation, right? You overthink because you lack confidence in your ultimate abilities. You lack confidence in what you're able to do. Your lack of confidence in what you're able to do comes from your lack of experience. You haven't done very many things that have allowed you to believe that you're somebody that's very capable of achieving big things, right? And that's fine. But your lack of experience comes from just your lack of taking messy action. So all of these things are connected on this ladder in a very particular way. And everybody's struggling on, on a different level and there's no magic key to, to get you to where you want to go immediately. You have to sort through things, right? So mega sellers are messy and they are unapologetic about their messiness. There's no like, oh, I did this. Like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. Uh, there's no, I shouldn't have done that. It's like, no, go. What's next? Go. Try it. Go. Didn't work. Go. Did work. Amazing. Build it. Didn't work. Amazing. Shift it. It's just forward motion. But when you're overthinking and you're not willing to be messy because you allow micro failures to mean something about yourself, you're stuck in one place and you're like, I could try that, but what if it doesn't work? I could try that, but what if it doesn't get me the results that I want? Who cares? Go forward action only. That's your small self talking. And we're not shutting up our small selves by saying, shut up, stop talking, stop thinking those things. I always think those things. I'm such a failure. No, we're not berating ourselves. We're just shifting into big self that says, no, just go. Naturally shut small self up by acting as big self, by taking action. At the end of the day, that's really the solution for everything is taking action just going forward motion at all times, being able to become the person who adapts, who tries things, they don't work, no sweat, I can adapt, I can pivot, okay? Mega sellers are messy. Everybody thinks that the process of building a mega shop, you know, happened miraculously. They made all of the right decisions, wrong. They just made all the decisions. They just made decisions. A lot of you are stuck because you're incapable of making decisions because you lack confidence. Going back to what we talked about, you lack confidence because you lack experience. You lack experience because you lack action. You lack the ability to make decisions. Mega sellers are just out there doing it. They don't care if it's right or wrong. They're just doing it because they're obsessed with learning. And the only way to learn something is to just do it. Okay. Uh, mega sellers get inspired and motivated to keep going by constantly learning. So this was absolutely my journey as well, selling on Etsy. I was always motivated to continue forward by all of the stuff I didn't yet know, all of the research I hadn't yet done, 
all of the customers I hadn't yet talked to. It was so exciting 24 seven. I'm telling you guys, I was, it was a high for me for 10 years straight of selling on Etsy. It was so fun. And if you don't feel that way, it's because you have an attachment to outcome. And that is weighing you down heavily. I had no attachment to outcome. Things worked for me really quickly because I was not attached to them working. I was not insistent that things worked. I was not like, where are my results? How much money did I make today? How, am I, how are my sales? How are my views? How are my stats? I didn't care. I was just like, what more can I research? What else can I develop that's going to make my customers go crazy? Who are my customers? What more do they want from me? What else do they want from me? Asking those questions. That's what I mean when I'm talking about being led by curiosity. It's asking these really juicy questions that are going to help you move forward in a way that you wouldn't have otherwise, because you were asking the wrong questions on the opposite side of the spectrum that said, where are my sales? What am I doing wrong? Being very self-centered and, and seller focused instead of customer focused. Okay. So mega sellers don't overthink. They do not ask during research. They don't say, oh, but what am I looking for? I feel like I'm doing it wrong. I'm not looking at the right things. I don't know where to research. I don't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. They're just looking at what's in demand, right? They're also being very logical. They're not asking, how do I know what shoppers want? It's a very obvious question, right? How do you know what people are buying a lot of? There's a lot of resources on Etsy that tell us that there's, there's bestseller badges. There is, you know, even like the Etsy pick badges can give us some hints of like what, what is trending or what people are shopping for. Like there's so many glaring things. And it, of course I do acknowledge these things may not be that obvious to people that are just starting out. But for those of you who have been in the game a little while, you're not thinking as logically as you can be thinking. So a lot of people are still asking me, a lot of people that have been following me for a very long time, how do I know? Like, why are you asking that? I know you know. I know you already know how to figure out what people are looking for. You're just not taking action to develop your skill on how to give people more of what they're looking for, right? You're not, you're not designing. You're not doing the level of research that you should. You're not taking the steps you know you should be taking. Okay? Mega sellers don't ask obvious questions. They take logical action. What's my next best, most logical step? And if they do ask an obvious question, it's like, well, what's, what's the answer here? And they're able to answer it for themselves and give themselves permission to take action on that thing. Again, they're not waiting for anybody to tell them necessarily what to do after they've gotten their foundational information and strategy in, in places like Top Seller Secret. They're just taking the action and figuring it out as they go. They may not have all the puzzle pieces yet, but that doesn't stop them from putting together the puzzle pieces that they have. A lot of you are so stressed out because you have four pieces of the puzzle and you know that there's 50 pieces. So you're just staring at the four pieces and not even trying to put them together. You're too stressed about not having the other, you know, 46 pieces. And it's like, put the four together and, and keep learning and gather the rest of the pieces. You don't need to start with the whole puzzle in view. You just have to take action and you have to go. Making sense? All right, does anybody have any specific questions about what we've talked about? Because I've said a lot of words here in the last hour in five minutes. Uh, I do have one more note in that mega sellers rely heavily on quality, meaning demand and not quantity. So I said this at the beginning as well. Mega sellers are not, um, they're not focused on how can I create more listings period, right? They're, they're focused on how can I create more things that serve my customer and what they're looking for to a T. So again, it's coming back to that level of competency. They're always obsessed with improving their level of competency, not on making more sales, huge distinction. Okay. Nobody has any questions. I'm going to give it just a second more. So I mentioned that there's a really, really, really big top seller secret bundle. If you guys want it, uh, I'm going to put the link in my bio on Instagram. Uh, and I also linked it in comments above, but it's 
it's big time. You can go to the checkout and see what's involved, but it's only gonna be up for 24 hours. Oh, you guys are so quiet. I was expecting lots and lots and lots of questions. This has been really amazing. Thank you for taking the time to do this. You're so welcome. Of course, I had some yesterday and I'm totally blanking. <laughs> kind of ready to go and explore it. Lauren, that's amazing. That is the actual um, direct effect that this workshop was supposed to have. If you are ready to go and explore and get curious and put in the work, then I've done my job here. But that's the type of motivation that I would like all of you to have every single morning when you wake up, right? That curiosity. If you're not curious about things, it's really hard to get out of bed and do anything. But curiosity opens up possibility and possibility is never ending. And that's a really exciting place to be. Yes, this was great. Thank you for having this. A soft come to Jesus meeting. Maria says, just started Top Seller Secret week one. Amazing. Welcome in. How do you keep from getting overwhelmed when looking at a blank screen? I will go in with my brain, research brain priming, then totally free sometimes when it comes to putting pen to paper. Um, Hunter says, I'm not familiar with the Top Seller Secret course. Can you do a few quick highlights? Yes. Hunter, it's probably best for you to go to... Um, uh, I can, if you DM me on Instagram, I can send you the link to the sales page because it's fully outlined there, but top seller secret is basically your foundation. It's all of my strategy, it's the blueprint, right? Search engine optimization, um, leveraging erank.com, all of the resources I use to get to six figure seller status as quickly as possible. And exactly how I used them. Nothing is held back in top seller secret. You're literally getting everything from me today, right? We talked, we talked to really like high level mindset stuff today. Like I said, thinking from your big self, this workshop was about, but the foundational strategy of how to become a mega seller on Etsy, the actual tactical stuff, the really nitty gritty stuff, how to use data to create uh, your product offering, how to not just guess, but using data to actually create a shop that is grounded in exactly what people are looking for all of that sort of stuff it's all in top seller secret right now is the time if you are if you guys are not in top seller secret you're on the fence about it if you use this link you can use afterpay so it's very easy to get into afterpay is an option it allows it allows you to pay over time you're getting design boot camp research revolution oh my gosh you're getting the wolf challenge you're getting into a month of wolf school you're getting designing for the holidays like all of my main courses are going to be in this bundle for the next 24 hours you're only paying for top seller secret this is huge i've never done this before um but hunter dm me on instagram be a wolf biz and i'll send you the link to the top seller secret uh, sales page or actually i don't even know why i'm saying that when i can just put it right here for all of you to read exactly what is inside but do not purchase from this link you have to purchase if you want the bonuses from uh the link in my bio okay um holly back to holly's question about getting overwhelmed when looking at a blank screen um, if you're looking at a blank screen, it means you're not actually operating out of inspiration, right? The only time that I'm going to open Canva is when I'm raring to go. When I've done some research or seen something and I've already got a set something in my head that I want to try. So if you're approaching your process in a way that it's like, okay, I'm going to Canva. <sighs> and then you're just staring at it because this is your designated time to create designs and you don't actually have any idea of what you're doing that's, you're just setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up in the wrong way, right? So I will only go into Canva when I have a specific inspired action to take. And that's how you keep from getting overwhelmed is because you've done research, you've seen something, you've got some ideas. You're, if you're in wolf school, you've seen one of my research videos and you're like, oh, I need to try that. I need to do this. I need to do that. Like things should really flow. Um, they're not going to flow as easily when you're first beginning. I will give you guys that 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 is the truth. Um, it gets easier as you go. So things will feel clunkier in the beginning, because like I talked about, you're at a, a certain level of competency when you begin or incompetency. So you'll have to fumble around a little bit. You'll have to be okay with fumbling around the more resources you get, like using Wolf School 
design templates, right? That's going to help you a ton starting from a template. That's the best advice I have for you, Holly, actually, instead of staring at a blank screen, don't stare at anything blank, start from templates, create things from templates. It's literally, you guys, this is the biggest design unlock there is starting from a template and plugging in your own design elements, words, whatever, you can create it into anything you want. It could look similar to the design template that you started with. It could look absolutely nothing like it by the time you're done. It doesn't matter. All that matters is it gave you a blueprint to start moving things around and, and trying different things. And, and it gave you a structure. Best advice I have. I can't see the link on Insta for Top Solar Secret Bundle. Uh, it, I just put it, Sarah, in the link in my bio. It's at the link in my bio right now. I just changed it. Um, but I will also put it here as well in the chat. Uh, not sure this is the time or place, but what are some main reasons people's shops on Etsy are getting removed? Thanks for everything you do. Uh, Blue House, that is not something I would concern yourself with whatsoever. The reason I don't talk about this is because it's so highly varied and there's so much fear around it. So if I were to just constantly be like, they're shutting people down for this, they're shutting people down for this, they're shutting people down for this. Everybody's always in a tizzy and their nervous systems are activated and they're always um, making decisions out of fear and not getting shut down and all this sort of stuff. Don't worry about it. Do you? Don't mess with copyright or trademark stuff right? Don't do anything that you know you're not supposed to do. Just keep moving forward. Okay. Uh, thanks for this. This was good. I used to have fun with the process of creating, but somewhere along the way in life, I lost the fun feeling and creative. Yeah. Um, and I think it's something that happens really easily because we uh, have to do all this work by ourselves, which is why I'm always trying to cultivate this community in wolf school and i'm trying to get on live as much as i can and i'm trying to be in your guys's faces like helping you and holding your hand along the way because it's really hard to maintain motivation and this level of fun and creativity when you're sitting in bed on your laptop by yourself every single day right or maybe you're doing this um after your nine to five or whatever like life gets in the way and it's very easy to lose that sparkle but when you're connected to a community and when you've got somebody that you know that's on your side, if you're in the Beowulf Biz Facebook groups, like leverage the places that will keep your spark alive. Leverage communities. That's, that's huge advice. Thank you. I love a template. Just wanted to start to create more. I'm working on it. Love this butt kick kicking. Well, Holly, um, don't make that a standard for yourself. Because templates are kind of like training wheels, right? So I could see you being like, well, I want to I wanna start creating with the training wheels off. But if you're staring at a blank screen and you don't know what to do next, you still need the training wheels, right? So it just means you're acting too soon. And, and developing competency doesn't happen on your decided timeline. It happens on the level of effort that you're putting in. So um, I put out tons and tons and tons of design templates in Wolf School, but I also myself will use a design as inspiration that I see. Maybe it's a bestseller on Etsy that I came across. Maybe it's something on Pinterest. I'll use the structure of that design and create my own design that's like it, but very unique in its own way. But using that place as a structure, I still do that. I've been creating designs for 10 years now, and I'm not saying copy anybody. You're using just a general structure and you're creating something completely your own through this structure, right? It's an incredible way to really get the movement flowing. It's really hard for even me to just look at a blank canvas and be like, well, let me create something out of thin air. That's hard, right? I love using things as templates as a basis, and I will not accept anybody telling me that that's copying. You're not copying anybody unless you're copying them, right? Unless you're just creating a replica of what you're seeing. That's not at all what I'm talking about. I'm talking about maybe you see arched text in a certain way, and they use a certain element with a cool shadow or an effect over the top, and you do something completely different, but along the same lines in terms of the structure. It helps so much, especially if you get overwhelmed by staring at a blank screen, because so do I. Cool. Does anybody else have any other questions? I'm going to wrap it up. If not, this was so much fun. That link to um, Top Seller Secret, the bundle, I'm going to put that in the comments again. If you've been on the fence, you guys, now is your time. I rarely ever, ever do this. I don't know if I'll bundle all this stuff again. It's only for 24 hours. Unfortunately, if you're already in Top Seller Secret, you do not have access to this. But if you guys still want Design Bootcamp or Research Revolution or anything and you're in Top Seller Secret, send me a DM and I will get you those links. 
um, to purchase if you're already in there. Okay. All right, guys, let's wrap it up then. I'm going to send out the replay by email. Um, I'll probably post this on YouTube as well. So you can listen to the audio over and over again. Um, it's something that I really want you to focus on allowing to sink in over time. If it felt overwhelming, that's to be expected, right? It's totally to be expected because everything that I've said here is big stuff. And it's a lot for your small self to hear and to digest. So listen to this as many times as you need. If you have any questions about Top Seller Secret or um, what to do next in terms of my resources and content, shoot me a DM on Instagram as usual. Okay. I love you guys so much. Thank you for being here and for sticking with me through uh, the Instagram live to Zoom call transition. And I'll see you guys soon.